Every Thursday evening, the nation has come together to applaud the frontline workers in the coronavirus outbreak. Tonight marks the 10th week of Clap for Carers, and the woman who started it has suggested it should be the last. Our correspondent Tim Muffet looks at how a simple idea has impacted so many. The sound of Thursday nights at eight. Neighbours, shoppers, hospital staff, on land, at sea, across the UK and abroad. A simple idea that grew and grew. On this council estate in North London, the impact of the weekly clap for carers has been profound. It's brought the community together. Even though I've lived here 17 years, I've, I've got to know people that I've never would have met. It's basically brought love, which is the key thing to all of our lives. Have there been neighbours you've seen because of the weekly clap which you maybe wouldn't have seen otherwise? Definitely. I mean, windows open, curtains pull back and people show themselves. And you see an exuberance for being part of this big celebration. But after 10 weeks, this estate is bringing its weekly NHS clap for carers to an end. Tonight's will be the last. We'll be out again tonight, you know, cheering these people to the rafters, but some people feel it's time to end on a high. The idea of ending the weekly clap is shared by the person who started it. And the reason why I will stop giving support to the weekly event is because I think it's good to end it whilst it still has such a positive impact. I hope that the legacy will be how much it brought us together and that we will always feel that um, a gratitude and appreciation that we have towards the essential uh, workers. Some have said the weekly clap has also become too politicised. But not everyone wants it to end. Some NHS staff say it still inspires them. Really, really positive impact on us. It's made us feel really valued as well. I think a lot of people would like to carry on. I'd be happy for it to carry on for another period of time. Tonight at 8, we'll gather again and clap. For the tenth time. And for some, the last. Tim Muffet, BBC News.